Welcome back to the Call of Duty World League Finals presented by PS4. You guys ready to bring out our next two teams? Yeah. All right. First up, we watched them take down Envy in the quarterfinals. Please welcome Elevate. Hello, hello. Go ahead and... How you doing? How are you guys feeling going into today? You obviously have a tough opponent. Why aren't you worried? Uh, we're feeling good, feeling confident. We're playing really well, so it'll be a good match. I, I heard that you told some of the casters they're going to take down Optic. You still feel that way? Yeah, of course. All right. Well, go take a seat, and we'll bring out our next team. <laughs> All right. This next team needs no introduction. They're the number one seed. Please welcome Optic Gaming. How you doing? Come on in. Okay, you guys won yesterday, but I could tell you guys said there was a little bit of disappointment. What was that pep talk li like last night? Well, last night we really just tried to regather ourselves, not put too much pressure on us coming into today. We know that we played a bad match and we know what we're capable of, so really just focusing on regrouping and coming back strong today. Absolutely. Well, go ahead and join your team. Thank you. They're getting ready, but before we get started, let's check back in with Will one more time. Thank you, Ashley. Indeed, this is semifinals number two here at the Call of Duty World League, presented by PS4 for the North American Stage 1 Finals. And just now, we saw a quick 4-0 by Ryze. They're now waiting at the Grand Finals. Who's going to face up against them? Is it going to be Optic, or is it going to be Elevate? First off, I'm a little disappointed in Scump. You never cross your arms in an interview. He learned that before. He did. Yeah? It was, it was a little awkward, but it's okay, because he's got to focus on here. playing well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> i got to give him a hard time. I, we're not teaming anymore, but I can still take some friendly jabs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Good, that's what good friends do. We're very much looking forward to this matchup, though. Scum played really, really well in the last hard point versus TSM. Yesterday, he went absolutely off. That's like the one game that's kind of burned into my memory. So, it'll be interesting to see who comes out hot and on top in this first hard point, because it kind of sets the tempo for the rest of the match. Yeah, Optic are counting their lives after that barely win against TSM, that there's a realistic chance that Optic Gaming probably couldn't have even made it to today. TSM were playing really well, but some fortunate stuff happened to them. You know, they closed it out in Game 7, and now they're going up against a tough Elevate squad. Yeah, Elevate played really, really well against MVS. They got here by proving themselves and showing that they are a talented team and they can win this event. So I don't think anybody was expecting Elevate to actually be in the finals. Uh, you know, out of all the teams that you saw on this side of the bracket, everybody was just assuming Optic, Optic, Optic. But we're about to find out right now if they can change that up. Yeah, because of what happened yesterday, it was looking a little iffy. But for Elevate, I mean, you heard that conference for Senda, he was it was just another day where it was like okay yeah of course of course we're gonna beat optic like why else would we think otherwise you know we're, we said that yesterday we're coming in hot and like you said they've proved it and we actually saw some highlights from the last time they played together during the break if you were watching the screen Elevate took it to a game five against Optic and Navafin was putting out some magic once again. Oh yeah, this is a very talented Elevate squad and I, I'm a little worried for Optic Gaming coming to this matchup when we start talking about the banner protects Elevate. They're one of the most creative teams out there. Saw Nagafin and Remy going crazy yesterday with a couple of plays that they were making. It just it seemed like MVS didn't have any any answers, and so hopefully we'll see Optic you know with those today. But I, I just can't wait for this matchup to start. We're going to be going with the same maps that we saw Rise Nation and FaZe compete on. I believe the first map was EVAC. Both of these teams played it yesterday. So we'll see what they can do. We've got Facento on screen, a support slayer who's really been a breakout player. He was on some decent teams throughout the entirety of Call of Duty Ghosts, and he found the right home with this group of players for the Call of Duty World Championships last year, and uh, they've been making waves ever since. I mean, Revan, what do you think about Facento? We've talked so much about Naga Fan, and of course, everyone knows why. There's been so many highlight clips of him, but Facento, what are you expecting out of this guy? I'm expecting him to be that aggressive SMG player that they need. They kind of switched up his role a little bit coming into this event when they first started playing in Stage 1. He was more of like an anchor, a positional AR player. They decided to swap roles him in Aqua. Now Aqua's going to be running the main AR for them, so I'm curious to see how he's going to match up against the likes of Scumpy going into this game. Yeah, it seems like we, we, Scum's kind of that standard that we all compare other players to because of what he's done. And we talked about him yesterday, about what an all-around amazing player that guy is. You, you just have to. I mean, if you guys go back and look at the stat sheet for the entire Stage 1 of the regular season, he's like number one in almost every single category, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's just been one of the best players. There's been some arguments with, uh, you know, a, a couple of people throughout the last couple of years if they can contend with Scum. But you, you just got to attribute a lot of his success 
attest to how good he actually is as a player in talent wise and ability. Yeah, I've been competing against Scum for many years now, and I've never had a fun game against them. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, dude, you had 2011 Fear. Revan, Revan was a hot shot back in the day, and and that was still when Scump was going on. I don't off ever events. remember playing against you guys in Ghosts, but. Yeah, we've had some good games against each other. Yeah, Revan's been in and out of the competitive team. My <laughs> man's a veteran, though. You guys got to give him the respect he deserves. And, and now, if you don't, you're going to have to answer to me. There you go. Well, now he's now he's just here and he gets to critique everyone. So it's a, it's a little bit of a different hot seat. It's, hot it's actually great being up on this couch, being able to just tell everyone, oh, they did that wrong. Yeah, that was awful. <laughs> it, it, it's the worst. I said it yesterday as a player when you listen to casters, like, critique your gameplay. But it, it's great that me and Revan can bully people from up here. I, I mean, uh, we both get it. When you're in the moment, it's kind of hard to sit back and kind of look at it from a third person perspective but then you go back and you watch rebroadcast and you're like yeah, I probably should have done something different then. Yeah, I messed that up. That was a mistake. Right. Yeah, so sometimes you got to admit, sometimes it's a difference of opinion. But we talked a little bit about Scump, of course, coming in hot with his teammates. And every time we talk about Optic, we talk about how all four, you do have to mention them. I mean, sure, Scump might be the best player in the game. But then you look at players like Formal, like Crimson and Karma, and suddenly you, you could write essays about all these guys, and all of them could get medals. I'm curious to see what Crim6 was saying at the hotel yesterday while they were trying to regroup, as Scump said on the stage in the interview before. I want to know what they were talking about, what key elements of their gameplay were they trying to improve on, uh, because I don't think they expected TSM to put up a good fight, and I don't think Optic realizes how close they were to elimination yesterday, because I I've said it a few times, TSM probably should have won that last S&D and sent Optic home, so I'm very, very curious what Crim6 was saying behind the scenes. Yeah, and we mentioned him earlier, but again, it's going to all come back down to scum. Is he going to show? Because yesterday he did have some maps where he was a little slow, and then others well, where he shined like he did. Yeah, yeah but I don't want to put all of the pressure on Skump, you know, because that team is just, a, they're juggernauts. I mean, you have Karma, who, you know, may have been the best player in Black Ops 2 and has been around for so long. He's got two world championship rings, and then you got Formal, the Phenom, the FPS Phenom, who can't, you can't find a game that this dude isn't good at. He's been playing CSGO. I know a lot of people get upset when my man Formal is playing CSGO before events, but I don't think you guys understand how talented Formal actually is. When you practice Call of Duty, you know what you're doing every single game, inside and out. He can play a little CSGO. You know, I think I put Formal in my top five list in terms of players right now in Black Ops 3, but yesterday he didn't have, you know, as stand yeah. out of performance that we usually expect from him. No, I, I completely agree with that, and I'm sure he's out for blood today because I know how competitive Formal is. He legitimately gets mad when he's not playing playing well. He doesn't get bad at his teammates. He doesn't try to put the blame on anybody else. It's formal sitting in his own head like, dude, I suck. Yeah, like, and, and we he, saw that yesterday after the game. He did not look happy even in the maps they won. And eventually after the match too, he looked like he was just ready to go back and practice a bit more because he wasn't pleased with his own performance. Exactly. If I was on that team and we won, I'd be like, oh man, let's go get some <laughs> sleep. Man, we got out of there by the skin of our, our neck, dude. And, and formal was right there like, I need to go and back and practice some more. So that just shows the mentality that he actually has. And you could say that about every single player on this team. All of them yeah. really hate to lose. I mean, Crim6 <laughs> especially, uh, for a long time in Karma's bile, he's like, I, I hate winning more than, I hate losing more than you love winning. Yeah. What a so, statement. It's, it's something like that. I, I always think of Rambo from back in the day, and I think it's still his bio to this day. Ever since like 2011 on Twitter, it's like losing, losing is learning and winning is teaching. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a very philosophical, but it's very true. It is true, and, and that's the mentality this team has. Now, yesterday, of course, I mean, with a 20-2 and record, you've beaten pretty much everyone 2-0. They had beaten TSM 2-0 during the regular season, and coming in this time, same thing with Elevate, but as we saw during that breaking with some of the highlights, and as we witnessed yesterday, that doesn't mean they're always going to win. I mean, Elevate has brought it to Game 5 during the regular season when they matched up against Optic. Yesterday, TSM brought it to a Game 7. Optic can't relax today. Elevate's a threat. Without a doubt, they are a threat. I mean, the way that they handled Envious yesterday was pretty impressive. I mean, it, there was a couple maps where it got close, but Elevate pulled away, and they showed how good they actually were. And even, I, I mentioned it earlier, that, that, that conversation that I had with Facento in the parking lot yesterday, it's like... He he, he kind of reminds me of Looney. He is not worried about <laughs> Optic at all. He's like, we're gonna. I want to play Optic. I want to beat Optic, and then I want to go to the finals. Then I want to win that. It's just okay. Let's see it. Matter man. of fact, let's yeah. see it. Yeah, both of these guys, Looney and Facento, having that attitude against the teams like Phase and now Optic for Elevate.
We're going right into the bands protects for that first map. It is the hard point returning for the semifinals on Evac, and the Semtex gets banned out once again from the side of a uh, side. This time, actually, from Elevate. I haven't seen one single Semtex thrown, and it makes me so upset because they're so fun to watch. I mean, we have the Semtex gone, the Frag gone, the Flashbang gone. So there's no need for Flak Jacket. There's no need for Tac Mask. You got that high caliber always going away. I don't think I've seen one ban and protect session where it wasn't banned. Let's see some protects. We're, what you protect him? We, we Rapid might. fire to probably round things out here. But the reason they banned the Semtex and the Frag is because of Karma. He's been using Danger Close on just about every single one of his classes as of late. If I'm if I'm Elevate or Optic, I, if I was a, a pro player up there right now, I'd protect Rapid Fire just to mess with everybody's heads. I mean, I, I'd welcome that. As a viewer, I mean, I have nothing on the line right now. V I'm all v down for the craziness. Uh, Kudo with Rapid Fire to take out that VMP for sure. There you go. I mean, we've we've seen some crazy ones rarely, but when they do come out, they do definitely catch teams off guard. So we might see them, you know, maybe planned out for the later in the day in the best of seven. Already pretty much done with the specialist drafts. The usual suspects coming out in terms of abilities and weapons for all A players. Is it out of the question to maybe expect like an Argus to come out from Aqua here? Ooh, or okay. the Brecky? He's he's always like bringing those shotguns out. You're right, and it'd be fun to see. I need to see the Brecky some, at some point here. We saw a formal there running the uh, scythe, and and he can be pretty lethal with that from time to time. But we're going to be moving into evac hardpoint, and Revan is going to give us some key points of this map and how we should play it better. I really think just like Mr. X was highlighting for you guys when we were going into that first series, it's all about the anchor player on this map. So. First, let's just highlight where the first hard point is going to be located. It's right here in the middle of, of the map, essentially. And where you want to be controlling if you're the anchor player for the first two hard points, actually, it's going to be here near the back helipad. So, of course, we all know that's where the second hard point is going to be. So this whole area is what you need to lock down kind of near the back helipad. And there's so many different angles that you need to look out for. Somebody's going to hit this back wall run. Are they going to come through this side room? Are they just going to fight straight up here with somebody hitting it from the middle alley as well? And that's why you kind of need, like, an SMG player to push out this cut over here. Maybe he he posts up in the trees and just tries to help out the anchor player by locking down one of those lanes. And as X was saying, the rotation to the third hard point is just so tough to make. Unless you have score streaks to work with, you have to go all the way around through glass and fight over near top AC. And that's going to be an interesting battle to watch. You know, Aqua versus Formal, maybe on the anchor position. Whoever could set up better and get those kills in rotation is going to give their team a bit of an advantage. Revan, if I do say so myself, I think you've given us the best breakdown that I've been a part of this whole weekend. I love you up there with your Someone's lines have and your boxes. This is true. His, his veteran pro player knowledge coming in handy. No, Revan came prepared. He was ready to drop some knowledge on everyone as we were casting and presenting all of this for the Call of Duty Worldly presented by PS4. Well, it's about time to load in to map number one. Earlier again, I, I you know, sorry to the FaZe fans, but I have to remind everyone, we saw a very unexpected result. Rise beat FaZe 4-0. Is that something that Elevate is looking forward to, or is Optic here to block it down? We'll find out in-game with Mr. X and Courage. Let's get it underway. Our final semi-final matchup, obviously. The winner of this faces Rise Nation. Rise on a tear. I don't think anyone wants to face Rise Nation at this point. Yeah. Phase 4 Oh, This is going to be a legendary match, Matt. Yeah. Cannot wait to get it started. Who are you predicting to take this one? I think this one is actually going to be a closer series than people okay. expect. I, I, I want to say Optic takes it, but I'm just <laughs> not confident. I need to see what we happens on map one. They're very good at evac hardpoint. Skump, look for him to go off. This is a perfect map for him. You know, you can get those close quarter engagements with the SMG. Just interested to see what Elevate has to throw out Optic. And I think if you were Elevate, you needed to do something different. The Banner Protect kind of all went in Optic's favor. Most certainly, we are loading into game number one. You see the trophy there, front and center. It's what all these teams are playing for today on Championship Sunday. Evac hardpoint, it's one that can get hectic off the start. We've got thousands and thousands tuning in online. We've got a packed house here at the ESL Studios in Burbank. And we've got a great matchup to get underway. Optic Gaming's formal. We're going to watch him off the break, Matt. He's got the AR watching from top tar. And he's going to have a tough battle on this map going against Aqua on the side of Elevate Aqua. A very explosive player, but you see Krim, Formal, and Karma with a big two-piece in the kill feed, and it's Optic Gaming able to take this first hard point early. Formal gets that first kill. They push it right on up with the sub. I already hear Krim yelling from the main stage with his call-outs. The hype coming in for Optic Gaming. They've completely slaughtered Elevate so far in this first hard point. 
You can see Formal continuing to put on the pressure with the submachine gun. If I'm a Green Wall fan right now, Matt, this is a start I wanted to see after a very shaky seven-game series versus TSM yesterday. I mean, just look at them dominating the kill feed. I mean, Elevate just cannot get into this hard point. You see Nagapen and Remy picking up kills apiece, and now they're starting to heat up. Aqua switches over from the MA to the Man of War. I think you can make a lot of nice plays happen with the Ooh. Man of War on this one. Aqua picks up a nice three-piece with an assist from Facento, but they need somebody else to step up. I mean, right now you got Nagapen at one and four, Facento at one and three. That's not going to cut it the rest of the way. Rim6 already has rotated over to this hard point, but oh, one player getting sneaky, and this is what makes Elevate such a good team. They love to do unorthodox things. The flank comes in. Only one kill, though, in favor of Elevate. Optic hold the first push, and now more pressure begins to come in from Top Kitchen. There's one. Able to get the second with the help of Scuff. It's three dead. Make it all four. Optic Gaming showing some life here on day two. And I believe, actually, during stage one, they were undefeated on this map. Oh, that helps. On EVAC hardpoint. So they're a very strong EVAC hardpoint team. And you can tell because they have those strong SMGs with Karma, Krim, and Scump all able to use those. And Formal does a very nice job anchoring both the oh these anchor God. spots on this map. He's going to have to head over towards the opposite side soon. But going to be Optic getting out to a huge lead. He's got one player directly to his right. It's going to be Remy taking that garbage time off. Optic still going to control the spawns. They're just going to try and push through this one and just muscle their way through this hill. And they used to do this a lot at Hardpoint, Jack, where they don't exactly rotate like you normally would expect the team to. They just fight those gun battles straight up, and they're talented enough to do it. You see Krim picking up two with the Man of War and the kill feed. It's going to be an all-out Optic push towards this third Hardpoint. Krim6 doing what he can to stay alive. He does earn one streak. That's going to end it, though. Karma staying alive inside the hard point. You can see the EMPs now being used. All the tacticals, all the grenades banned out. Three dead again on Elevate. Optic Gaming already outslaying them by 20 kills. Everyone's positive. Near a flawless game so far for the green wall. And that, it reflects in the score. Already up by 70 seconds. Yeah, this reminds me a little bit of uh, Rise's lead on phase early. You oh, see one player no. go right over the top of Karma. Nice play there by Nagafen. And Krim actually takes out Skump in the hill with his lightning strike. Doesn't get anybody else. So a little bit of a waste of that streak. A fortunate break there for Elevate as they should be able to take the last 20 or so seconds on this hill. And they're not going to find themselves right back in the game, Jack, but for as bad as it's been early, you'll kind of take that if you're Elevate. Oh, most certainly. Back within about 50 seconds, the rotation needs to come on in. They'll get the scrap time. Optic in a great position, and this is what the confidence is of Optic Gaming, right, Matt? Look at how far pushed up Crim6 and Karma are out of the hard point. There's no one even remotely near Skump. Now, finally, the first line of defense has fallen. The pinch coming in from Elevate. We'll see if they can get the break on this hill. Yeah, they relied on Skump to at least win one gunfight there. He wasn't able to come up with it, but I think you need to play a little Oof. bit close to that hard point if you're Optic. Well, it doesn't matter when you have Formal flying in, picking up three players. But I, I don't know if you're going to get away Formal. with that further in the tournament. And Formal starting to heat up. When he gets on fire, there is nobody with a better AR shot. Formal on a four streak there does die to the hands of Nagafen. Elevate still down by a minute. Pressure continuing to come in from the pool side, and this is what you've got to love about Karma from Optic Gaming, Matt. You coach this man. He just knows exactly where to catch his opponents off guard that time. Uses that sidewall run, hops in the pool. Elevate players aren't ready for it. He gets to. Gives Optic a chance to break. You can see Skump back in the hill. He wins the gunfight, and after the first rotation of hills, this is an Optic Gaming-led game. It's now. ugly right now. Matt, I do want to go into a listen-in with Elevate. We know they have fantastic teamwork. We'll see if their communication can stack up against the green wall. Good job. I know I'm Green, 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 maybe. I'm looking green. Yo, right side. Fuck. He's on you, Yuli. Okay, you got me. What's up? Oh, we die. All right, nice. Hop up, probably. Hop up, probably. Yo, green, 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 Big door. On the stairs, on the stairs, on the stairs. Big door, big door. Big door. We kill him. I spawn, I spawn bedroom. 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 I spawn I keep writing them down. I got two, 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 two. Up top, plat, 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 plat. That, that guy's weak on stairs and there's a scythe on the Camel pushes, camel pushes. Big door, big door, big door on the left. Big door on the yeah, left. Yeah, yeah, he pushed me. Right side, right side. Grim. Big door, big door, big door. I spawned out, I spawned out. Dead, 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 dead. Three, 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 three. Yo, one staircase, staircase coming in there. Let's go. Yo, last guy. One more, one more. Big door. He's on hill. He's gonna get down. Gotta get him, gotta get him. Stairs weak, stairs weak. Last guy, two down. I got both. Let's go. Nice, good job, Jared. Push up front, push up front. I have remaining ten. Yo, they're gonna hit front. They're gonna hit front. They're gonna hit front. I got one. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll pick up top or bottom. What do you pick up? Matt, they're all on the same page of communication. You heard them saying, "Push out front. Push out front." Aqua was already ahead of that one. They're back now within 40 seconds. What has changed since the first half of this game to this point? Well, they're just starting to win some gunfights. At the beginning, it was all optic, and now starting to see some of the LFA players gain some confidence. And right there, I mean, that's a gunfight. 
you'd like to see him win and see Remy trying to go around the uh, outside. He's going to contest for those spawns, just not able to win that one. You see the pinch coming in from Optic and look how far away Elevate spawning, but Aqua goes big, picking up two in the hill. And now it's going to leave Formal last one alive. <laughs> Everyone just converging on this hard point. He's the only one inside of it. He's going to be able to get one. There's players pushing from the bottom and top. He needs some teammate support in there. He's got Krim with him, and it's going to be Formal tagging some players up. Krim and Karma cleaning them up. But more importantly, Formal gets that lightning strike. Let's see if he uses it here on rotation. Many people regard Formal as one of the best in the history of competitive COD on stepping up on Championship Sunday. That He's showing it right now, Matt. 24 and 11 on a five streak. He gets one more kill. He earns himself a Hellstorm. And look at this push coming out of Skump right now towards Laundry. He loses the gunfight versus Nagafen. Formal, though, still with an opportunity now to go for this pinch. And as I say that, Optic go four dead. I want to go to a listen in with OG to see how they break this hill. Still up by one minute. Where are they at? Probably one. Yeah, in laundry. Oh, in laundry, one shot. One shot next to you. Outside laundry door. Laundry got me. 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 Outside laundry door. 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 He wasted kinetic. kinetic. All right, I'm staring at it. Does he have any more kinetic? Elevate, we're getting closer and closer to streaks. You heard Scump say, I have kinetic, I have kinetic. They let him charge in first, gets to, and the clean break. Optic hold on to their 60 second lead. Matt, they're looking solid right now. And Trim6 does not miss a bullet with the Man of War, and he's going for more. And the one thing I liked about that Optic listening is obviously they played around that kinetic armor of Scum. But when Scum gets into the hill and he calls a player out top AC, you hear guys like Krim. He's like, don't worry about it. I'll take that player out. And then they let each other know where they're watching. So there's no confusion. Two people watching the same thing. It, it sounds really easy and kind of basic. But a lot of teams, when we go to listenings, they don't exactly do that. You play kind of off your minimap. But it takes out that error and just that quick moment just looking up in your minimap out of the way. And you're able to make some smart decisions on the fly. Oh, most certainly. It definitely pays off in the long run. Optic, they continue to hold on to this lead. After two rotations, you've got formal near double positive. Still, he has not slowed down as of yet. And what makes him so lethal, Matt, is a lot of AR players, yes, they'll be double positive, but they won't have much hill time. Formal not only leads his team, but the game in the objective. Karma just now surpassing him. Well, that's how we saw FaZe playing early in Stage 1 with oh. Enable. As you see, Karma pops his heatwave, only able to get one there. But we saw FaZe early in Stage 1 when Enable was running the AR. He was doing that a lot as well. And when your AR player can just post up into the back of these hard points, he can just cause chaos for these players just flooding in. And you see right there, I believe it was Remy just cycling in as Formal picks up a two-piece with a scythe. But he has he has no idea where to look, Remy. I mean, he looks to his left to try and take out Karma, and Formal's right there to just pick him up easy. Optic, two players get heat waved, but somehow they hold the push of Elevate again. This is their largest lead of the game now. They just get better as time goes on, Matt, watching this big door area. Some team kills do go in. It looks like Elevate will have an opportunity, but as I say that, Elevate get a team kill themselves, and Optic Gaming retake control. With nine seconds left, it's going to be Optic probably just going to try and muscle their way into apartments. They're not really worried about rotating at this point in the game because you have such a large lead. You can try and fight this straight up. Matt, you see Optic still utilizing the EMPs. They EMP check areas. Thoughts on that decision? Obviously, it's, it's working out here for OG. It, it's something Karma used to do on Impact back in Black Ops 2. That was one of the things that, I, you know, when I was working with Krim, <laughs> and we were just kind of looking at Impact's VODs. They did a great job of using EMPs to their advantage. Not shocked to see Karma doing it again in Black Ops 3. This is the last chance for Elevate to try to stop this Optic Gaming win, but they've got everything covered. The green wall come out on Championship Sunday. Best they've looked so far this weekend, 250 to 149. If I'm a fan of Elevate right there, it's a rough loss, but this is also Optic Gaming at Hardpoint. Yeah, exactly, and it's pretty even across the board in the objective time for Optic Gaming. That's good to see if you're an OG fan. You know, Formal with two minutes plus in the hill, Karma with a minute 42, but Crip leads the team in kills 37 and 33. That's a really good sign if you're an OG fan. Most certainly, we talked about the anchoring on that map prior to the game. Revan, how'd Optic Gaming do? Well, lead, lead the way, Revan. How did Optic Gaming do? They did pretty well. We okay. were kind of talking about Formal going into that one. He has an explosive start to that game. And you could see that Optic Gaming, 
They've adjusted their hardpoint play from what we saw from them yesterday. Formal now inside the hardpoint, kind of approaching it like Rise do. You know, get that assault rifle player inside the hardpoint, and the SMGs just push forward and clear out the lanes. Well, I was sort of expecting Optic to have this start because they didn't struggle versus TSM yesterday in hardpoint whatsoever. It was more of like the latter part of the match where we w started walking into search and destroy and uplink and capture the flag. So I was more or less expecting Optic to do this well, but I don't really, I didn't think Optic would do as good as they did in the in the kill department that every single player actually contributed there was nobody that was like lacking at any point in time it was like all around a team effort everybody pulled their weight everyone did their part and it got them to a nice swift victory in the first map yeah kind of similar to the earlier match i mean elevate didn't really get a chance to even climb back it wasn't that they were playing poorly but optic just never let go of their grip right they were just right behind the from the get-go and they were just kind of playing catch up with optic gaming uh, clearly optic they dictated the entire pace of the game it was elevate playing to the pace of optic not the other way around and then one thing that i i hate to bring up but i'm going to do it anyways because i wouldn't be a good person if i didn't at the beginning of the game, what did you guys hear before the match even started? They're getting hyped up. We heard Crim6, Real and, we heard, and we heard Skump screaming before the match <laughs> actually started. We are literally on the opposite side of the room, and we could hear them echoing all the way back here. They were excited, and I, I think that was them right there trying to convince themselves, like, we're here for the one reason that we know we are here for, and that's to win, and we've proved it throughout the entirety of the season. We're going to go do it here right now. Yeah, on that note, when we had that listen in, though, it's, they weren't screaming during the game. It was simply, I think, like you said, a reminder, telling themselves, like, hey, why are we here? Why are we the best team? Why are we number one seed right now going into this match? Yeah, it, it just seems like they were firing all cylinders. They were calm, cool, and collected. They were picking up the kills. You saw Formal picking up some nice... Uh, I, actually, I think I saw Crim6 running the Mana War, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he did. And he goes back and forth on this map. Yeah, and the Mana War, for me, it's like there's always been this formula in competitive COD that every pro player's got, like, embedded in their mind that you have to have a certain amount of SMGs and a certain amount of ARs in, in every single map. I just feel like you can get away with running four Man of War sometimes, certain maps. That, I don't know.